Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to another question and answer session. The following statement regarding the rectus abdominis muscle are true except. So, in this question, they want to know that which is true regarding the rectus abdominis muscle except that means which is false. So, in case of rectus abdominis, which statement described below is false. So, we have to find out one of the option which is not true regarding the rectus abdominis muscle. We know that the rectus abdominis muscle is one of the flat long muscle present in the midline of anterior abdominal wall just either side of the linear alba. Here are the options. The options are it runs from the sympathesis pubis to the xiphoid process. It nerve supply is from the ventral rami of lower six thoracic nerve. It has collateral supply from both the superior and inferior epigastric vessels. It lies a muscular aponeurosis throughout its length. It has a number of tendinous insertion that penetrate to the anterior layer of the muscles. So, these are the options. We have to find out one of the options which is not compatible with the rectus abdominis muscle. That means, uh, which information not true regarding the rectus abdominis muscle. So, first of all, we have to know details about the rectus abdominis muscle. So, here we can see this is the rectus abdominis muscle and this rectus abdominis muscle, it starts from above here. We can see here it arises from the lower part of the sternum. That means the xiphoid process and some of the ribs either side of the xiphoid process and we can see it uh, descend downwards up to the pubic tubercle and pubic symphysis so it is the normal origin and insertion of the rectus abdominis muscle then in the second picture we can see the blood vessel going to the rectus abdominis muscle and here first of all we can see this is the superior epigastric artery this is the superior epigastric artery and do the superior epigastric artery it is branched from the internal thoracic artery and it descend downward here we can see the superior epigastric artery after entering into the rectus abdominis muscle it descend downward on the other hand we can see another artery which arising from the external iliac artery and it ascends upward and we can see they meets in that place so this rectus abdominis muscle it is supplied by these two epigastric artery one is the superficial epigastric artery another was the uh, superior epigastric artery and another one is the inferior epigastric artery this superior epigastric artery it arises from the internal thoracic artery and inferior epigastric artery this, ar this arises from the external iliac artery so in the rectus abdominis muscle there is two important Vessels one is superior epigastric, another one is inferior epigastric, and it originated from a hair from the zipper process and some of the costal cartilage and it terminates into the pubic tubercle and symphysis. Then, in this picture, we can see here very clearly that this is the uh, rectus abdominis muscle, it extends a long part and it presents just either side of the linear alba in the midline. And we can see it is supplied by this group of the nerve. Here we can see the anterior cutaneous branch and lateral cutaneous branch of the ventral rami of the thoracic 6 to thoracic 12. So here it is clear that the rectus abdominis muscle it receives its innervation from the ventral rami of thoracic 6 to thoracic 12. So this important is also very very important regarding rectus abdominis muscle and this picture it is another picture and in this picture we can see here this is the rectus sheet rectus sheet is a partial structure which covers the rectus abdominis muscle and we can see here this is the muscle and this muscle it receives tendinous insertion from this rectus sheet actually the rectus sheet are attaches at this level at this level 
so the rectus abdominis muscle it is attaches with the rectus sheet in the different side in the three side on east of the rectus abdominis muscle so this is also important because when uh, we do uh, the different type of operation then this tendinal uh, tendinous incision uh, insertion point knowledge is important then in this picture we can see in the anterior layer uh, previous picture we can see here the anterior layer of the rectus sheet actually the rectus sheet has two wall one is the anterior another one is the posterior in case of anterior wall we can see it extends from the g5 process and postal cartilage up to the pubic tubercle and symbiosis so this point is very important that the anterior layer of the rectus sheet it extends from the g5 process and up to the pubic symbiosis or pubic tubercle but here we can see uh, if we remove this rectus abdominis muscle here, this rectus abdominis muscle is removed, then we can see the posterior layer of the rectus sheet here. This is the posterior layer of the rectus sheet, and this cut is actually it is the anterior layer of the rectus sheet. And we can see this rectus sheet posterior surface or posterior wall where we can see it ends in here. So, posterior layer of the rectus sheet actually it doesn't reach up to the lower part up to the pubic symbiosis and pubic tubercle so this line is also also important that the anterior layer of the rectus sheet it presents whole of it is length but the posterior layer of the rectus sheet this rectus sheet it didn't reach up to the insertion point that means the pubic tubercle and pubic symbiosis area okay, they ends at this line so this important uh, information is also very very important for the answering the question so these are uh, in a short about the rectus abdominis muscle so here our final answer here this is not true regarding the rectus abdominis there's muscular aponeurosis throughout it is length it is not true because uh, it is now known to us that the muscular aponeurosis that means the rectus sheet it usually not present the posterior wall of the rectus sheet it is deficit at a certain point such as here you can see it extends up to here the arcuate line then it is deficit in the posterior and other option here such as here you can see the trans from the symphysis pubis and zipoid process it is true it's nerve supply from the ventral rami of the lower thoracic thoracic nerve it also true it has collateral supply both the superior and inferior epigastric uh, artery of the or vessels it is also true it has a number of tendinous insertion that penetrate through the anterior layer of the muscle it is also true and we saw that in the picture and here on important line that the aponeurosis is a deficit below the arcuate line in the posterior layer of the rectus sheet so posterior layer of the rectus sheet there is a deficit at the level of the arcuate line or below the arcuate line so this is all about the rectus abdominis muscle and this rectus abdominis muscle is very very important for a type of the exam thank you all